The title of this sermon is Mental Health Matters. And it is an important topic, especially to one of our 18-year-old congregants who won this sermon in this year's annual auction. Every year I auction off a choose your own sermon topic. Yes. And it's a welcome challenge to my preaching chops, and also I get to know a congregant fairly well while we work together on the topic. Let me just say that I am deeply honored and excited to preach on this topic because it's near and dear to my heart. And I know it is also near and dear to the heart of the youth who won this sermon. So let us hold each other with love, tenderness, and open hearts as we explore this topic today. Mental illness and mental health concerns are not modern. Mental health is an age-old human condition. Depression was initially called melancholia. The earliest accounts of melancholia appeared in ancient Mesopotamian texts in the second millennium BC in Babylonian texts. At this time, mental illnesses were attributed to demonic possession and were attended to by priests. In contrast, a separate class of physicians treated physical injuries, but not conditions like depression. The first historical understandings of depression was thus that depression was a spiritual or mental illness rather than a physical one. We read in the book of Psalms from the Bible why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Age-old questions. Why do I feel like this? It was not until 1621 when Robert Burton published Anatomy of Melancholy, in which he described the psychological and social causes of depression, such as poverty, fear, and solitude. In his extensive work, he recommended diet, exercise, distraction, travel, purgatives, cleansers that purge the body of toxins, bloodletting, herbal remedies, marriage, <laughs> and even music therapy as some treatments for depression. During the beginning of the Age of Enlightenment, the 18th and early 19th centuries, it was thought that depression was an inherited, unchangeable weakness of temperament, which led to the common thought that affected people should be shunned or locked up. As a result, most people with mental illnesses became homeless and poor, and some were committed to institutions. We still have institutions and residential treatment options, but we don't think of ourselves as condemning the mentally unwell to lives of isolation anymore. There's a rising awareness about mental health care and opportunities for support. But how welcoming are we as a congregation to people with mental health concerns? It's something to wonder about. The least we could do is not shun them, but welcome and include them, support and engage with them. The state of the world is certainly calling for some sort of support. I recently read a report that said one in four people in your congregation is affected by mental illness. One in four. And we know that mental illnesses do not discriminate now they affect people from all races, creeds, income categories, and social classes. Stigma keeps people from sharing their stories with others in our congregation, so they seldom get the same support people with other illnesses do. Mental illness has often been called the no casserole disease. No one sends a card or brings you food when you're recovering from mental illness or mental health concerns. It's true. These unseen illnesses and, 
like mental illness and addiction are not things we typically make casseroles for, but why not? Maybe we need to rethink that. Those are diagnosed mental illnesses like depression, anxiety, bipolar. We are not here to really talk about diagnosis today, but we are here to talk about mental health. So, that, so those that suffer from mental illness and those that suffer from the human condition are included. Nearly three quarters of Americans say that they are overwhelmed by the number of problems facing the world today. And even more state that they feel as though the past two years in particular have been a constant stream of crises. Suicide and suicidal behavior among youth and young adults is a major public health crisis. Suicide is the second leading cause of death among young people aged 10 to 24 years in the United States and rates have been rising for decades. The truth is, more than half of people who seek outside help when they're in crisis turn first to their clergy and faith leaders before they seek help from psychiatrists, physicians, and psychologists. You turn to your community for help. Now, Reverend David and I are trained as clergy to be with you on our journeys and also to know when to refer out when necessary, to give you referrals for medical health professionals to help you on your way. We try to keep updated resources for those who are in need of mental health care on top of pastoral care. And we promise to continue journeying with you but not in the same way a mental health professional can. If you are in crisis, do not wait on us to get help. Please get help. This summer, I had the pleasure of seeing Amelia Nagoski, the co-author of Burnout, The Secret to Unlocking the Stress Cycle at the Association for UU Music Ministries Conference in Baltimore. She spoke to us about how burnout lives differently in our bodies than depression. Depression is something that should be treated by a medical professional. However, burnout, people often think that self-care is the remedy. Nagoski suggests that it is not self-care that remedies burnout, but community care. When we show up for each other, we realize we are not alone. We have access to wisdom, resources, fellowship, and love. We can be seen exactly as we are and embrace healing. There are thousands, millions of people who are living with a mental illness or brain disorder or mental health challenges who are looking for a faith community that offers an inclusive welcome and provides spiritual support. Can I be myself here? Can I be vulnerable and safe here? Can I be brave here? Will I be seen here? Will I be loved here? Will I belong here? Silence around issues of mental health increases stigma and limits capacity for personal relationships keeping people from learning about the resources and assistance available to them. Conversely though, when communities are safe spaces for sharing about mental health conditions, individuals always benefit. Remember the person has an illness, the person is not the illness. Mental health and illness involve multiple factors including biology and neurochemistry and are not the fault of the person, the family, or anyone else. Radical welcome and awareness can transform communities. One of our congregants teaches a NAMI, National Alliance on Mental Illness, family-to-family -family course here at our, at our campus regularly, 
and he tells me he's interested in offering a 90-minute version of this longer series as a seminar at UUCF. I'm offering a wellspring class called Crises of Life that follows a book by Reverend Jen Crow entitled Take What You Need, which chronicles her putting her life together back together after losing almost everything in a fire. This six-week class should be a great opportunity to discuss how our own crises in life have changed us and how we have overcome and survived them. I will keep the congregation posted on offerings such as this and more, especially if there is a need and a desire for it. But always, if you are in crisis, I please encourage you to get help. 988 is a new, relatively new, 24-hour mental health hotline, just like 911 is an emergency number. You can call or text 988 for free and get connected with someone who can talk you through whatever you're feeling and find resources. Reverend David and I are here for you as well, but don't ever wait to help get help if you are in crisis. I want to close today with a familiar poem to many, Wild Geese by Mary Oliver. You do not have to be good. You do not have to walk on your knees for a hundred miles through the desert repenting. You only have to let the soft animal of your body love what it loves. Tell me about your despair, and I will tell you mine. Meanwhile, the world goes on. Meanwhile, the sun and the clear pebbles of rain are moving across the landscapes, over the prairies and the deep trees and the mountains and the rivers. Meanwhile, the wild geese high in the clean blue air are heading home again. Whoever you are, no matter how lonely, the world offers itself to your imagination, calls to you like the wild geese, harsh and exciting, over and over, announcing your place in the family of things. May you feel your place in this extended family of UUCF, May you feel seen and whole and loved. May you feel brave and safe and held. And may you know in your bones that you belong here exactly as you are, whole, holy, and loved. Amen. <laughs>